What's up everyone, welcome to Akuma Industries and today we are celebrating the one year anniversary of the channel. Uh, it was actually yesterday, but I realized it was yesterday, kind of late, so it'll just be today. And I decided to change the name to Akuma Industries to um, help motivate myself to become a bit more industrious when it comes to the YouTube channel. You know, like a factory. I'd like to become a factory and what I output is YouTube videos. But today, we are talking about the Seikosha Kamikaze watch. This is a very important watch in history, uh, simply because of the fact that um, it basically embodies the spirit of an, of an entire nation. Uh, as we know, Japan was an Axis power during World War II, but they were, and they fought to the bitter end until their country was pretty much surrounded on all sides, and um, two atomic bombs were dropped on their country. So. When it comes to explaining their culture though, the culture of, of Imperial Japan was a very interesting thing. They were completely and utterly uh, imperialist, as I mentioned before, but it was imperialism with a twinge of fascism. Uh, there are, I believe there was two main factions in the military. There was the extreme, extreme, extreme uh, fascists who wanted to restore. This is before uh, we had a, we had a totalitarian government in Japan. It was still kind of a democracy, kind of ruled by political parties. Um, yeah, we had on one hand people who wanted to stage a coup and institute the emperor as the head of state. That ultimately failed, the coup failed, but later a different uh, faction in the government, I think they were called the control faction, um, and the military ended up taking power through uh, conventional means, and that was the main split between those party lines. So from, like I believe, like maybe 1939 onwards, Japan is, is literally a uh, completely fascist government. Everything is dedicated to the war front. Um, the lives of every single citizen is dedicated to the war front. You know, um, in fascist Japan, a man's job was to be a soldier. A woman's job was to be a uh, baby maker and homemaker. For example, there was a, a general Hideki Tojo. He was one of the, I think, the, one of the leading generals, or maybe he was. A, yeah, I believe he was head of state of Japan for a, a, a stint. Uh, he never. This is just an example of a character from this era. He never, ever, ever, ever raised his kids. He never, ever, ever raised his kids. He literally thought that raising your own kids was a woman's duty, and he never did it. Um, yeah, an interesting guy. Not something I would say I respect Tojo, but, you know, <laughs> he's a freaking war criminal. So uh, I, I definitely recommend looking up Hideki Tojo. Very interesting guy. Anyways, we're talking about the Kamikaze Watch. As I mentioned before, the emperor was everything Imperial Japan. Just to put in perspective, soldiers, instead of being captured, there's videos of this, their planes would land in the water, and instead of being captured by the Americans, they'd, they'd open up a grenade and blow themselves up in the middle of the water. Um, it was a very common thing for Japanese soldiers to commit suicide or to do suicidal attacks on enemy positions because being captured in their society was a sign of... Um, Cowardice. Yeah, cowardice. However, this watch, I, I don't really like calling it the Kamikaze watch because ultimately it was an aviation, it was a marine aviation wristwatch. Um, I mean, the watch wasn't just worn in Kamikaze missions. The Japanese Navy was very, very, very powerful at the time. I believe it was probably the po most powerful Navy in the world, maybe second behind Great Britain. Um, and they were, their navy was not to be messed with. That's why they uh, did a, a first strike on, on, on the United States, because they were like, okay, we have a strong navy now, but America can make ships faster than us. If we take out their navy now, we'll be good. Didn't work, obviously. And Japan's getting pushed back to all of the islands, and the United States is in, incorporating a strategy called island hopping. Basically, taking over these islands, setting up uh, air bases, naval bases, resupply posts, and then inching ever, ever closer to Japan. 
And Japan was also trying to do the same thing to America. But uh didn't work after the Battle of Midway. So as the United States is advancing closer and closer and closer and closer to the Japanese homeland, the Japanese Navy is getting desperate, very desperate. Um, their, their homeland was being bombed. Their, their factory output was not producing enough. Um, they weren't producing that many planes. And they figured, you know, what do we even have left? We have our planes. We have our spirit. And let's go drive our freaking planes into an enemy vessel to sink it. So what they do would they would load up their planes with a crap ton of bombs, take them out, of course, and fly them directly into uh, you know, uh, U.S. Navy vessels. Horrifying. I'll play a song, which was the um, kind of like the, the the national anthem to these uh, kamikaze. With the homeland in danger of invasion, the Japanese high command turns to a desperate new attack. On the 25th of November 1944, Honestly, it is a, a bit sad. Uh, yes, and obviously, if you were a kamikaze pilot, you died a kamikaze pilot. So, uh, the wristwatch is under Seikosha. Seikosha is a subsidiary of Seiko, and it was um, a split-off section of Seiko because Seiko, I think, was was they? Well, I think they were focused on clocks, and I believe they also made some uh, marine chronometers also. And of course, they made wristwatches. Uh, Seikosha is mainly the umbrella that Seiko used for their World War II wristwatches. Um, and before, I didn't really know what happened to Seikosha. I was like, oh, did it kind of just go extinct? No. It kept on changing names. It went from like Seikosha to Danny Seikosha to all the way to nowadays, it's uh, Seiko Precision Incorporated and Seiko Clock Incorporated. And then I also was split off as the Seiko Epson stuff which is, um, I think I was split from Seikosha, but I would really consider it a separate entity. The wristwatch has a rotatable bezel, of course, to, I mean, then so I think there is some uh, chronograph versions, but uh, just like in the other video I mentioned with the, um, it, it, you're at sea, and it's very important to know how much fuel you have at sea. I mean, for example, <clears throat> I can't remember if there's a battle of Midway or there's a different one, um, a, Jap a, a bunch of Japanese carriers got sunk. I think it was like three Japanese carriers. And the, the pilots were just were circling around for like an hour or two hours or however long at, because they had nowhere else to refuel, right? You landed on the, on the carrier, you got refueled, and you got sent back out. But these guys went off to fight the Americans. They come back, all their carriers are sunk. And they just zoom around for a while, and they land in the water. Um... At sea, when there's no land, uh, the only the thing that you can you know use to refuel is your aircraft carrier. It's very important to know what the distance, how like literally how much fuel is exactly in your thing, um, how how many hours have elapsed, etc. Very important that rotatable bezel. It has an over it had an oversized crown, just like the uh, the B U G R for the uh, Germans. Because you had these thick gloves, <clears throat> you need to be able to, you know, twist it with these thick, thick, thick gloves. Because remember, this is World War II. <laughs> if you're going out in these airplanes, going real fast, going real high, it's cold up there. So uh, the crown needed to be able to, to obviously work. 
the ha these had a 48.5 millimeter case. Woo, gigantic. I will never have one in my collection just because of how damn large it is. Um, and speaking of that, these go for a lot of money. 20K, you know, these are not cheap wristwatches, period. And on top of that, not many are available. And there are no modern homages to this wristwatch. Other watches like the A11 or the Biugur or the, um, uh, what is the, the, some of the Dirty Dozen wristwatches, they have modern remakes. This does not. Uh, obviously, it's because of the stigma of it being, you know, a kamikaze wristwatch. And it's not, I've, this is me putting my own conjectures in, but uh, it's like, it's it's almost, it's almost to, to the Japanese, it's like the Germans, I guess the Germans do make uh, German wristwatches, but um, you know how in Germany you can't even, you can't even have a Nazi flag, you can't even read Nazi books, um, you can't even read Mein Kampf, because it's all illegal. If, just to put even even in normal stuff like for example, there's World War Two video games. If you want to sell your World War Two video game in Germany, you can't even have a Nazi flag in there. Same thing, but uh, Japanese version. Um, a, a shame about World War Two. Um, this it also got me thinking. That's another uh, response project for down the line, definitely. And some concluding concluding thoughts. Um, World War Two is especially. I would say I don't know why, but I really do sympathize with the Japanese during World War Two. Um, they put up a really good fight. They were defeated, and thank God they were defeated. But uh, they really, they were just facing an opponent that was just way 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 too strong for them uh, the United States industrial capacity was dwarfed Japan the United States had more manpower the United States was less vulnerable to attack the mainland you couldn't even there was no possibility of Japan invading the United States um, th the only thing that they could hope for was knocking out the United States Navy posing enough threats so that the, the Americans would um, uh, sue for peace with them wasn't gonna happen though buddy so this is to all of the veter veterans of world war ii thank you for your service whether you're a japanese or american russian or german not really if you're ss sorry about that um, italian british french polish resistance yugoslavian anything this is to you i thank you very very much for watching everybody this is akuma from akuma industries and i'm out